Well, hello, Mr. Brett Kissel. And hello, how are you? I am so fantastic. How are you? Very good, thanks. In full dad mode today, just dropped off our oldest girl, Mila, at school. And so, uh, yeah, just balancing life in country music and life, well, being a dad. Yeah, because we actually rescheduled this interview, and I thought that was the best reason I've ever been rescheduled on in my life, because you're dropping your kid off. <laughs> well, thank you for being so accommodating. From the get-go, my wife and I made a, made a pact that, you know what, with our relationship as husband and wife, but also with our relationship with our kids as we started adding more members to the family uh, was to do this, to make sure that we integrate my life in music into what we do as a family, but also integrate what we do as a family into my life of music. So that way there's balance on both sides. So thank you for being accommodating. Oh, absolutely. And I know the pandemic is never a good thing, but I would think over the last few months, um, that merging of the two, the business and the family, you probably are getting more family um, to help you kind of lay that foundation of how you're going to be able to juggle all the, the wee ones at home. Absolutely. And you know what, I, I have to be very sensitive, you know, when I say this, because there's, there's been a lot of pain and heartache that has been caused by the pandemic that we're going through right now. And even though I've experienced a great deal of that, especially at the very beginning, the silver lining that I've chosen to focus on is the fact that I've been able to steal time back with my family. Every year I would spend more than 250 to 300 days on the road. I would, I have not spent more than four consecutive nights sleeping in the same bed since like 2015. Oh my gosh. And now this year, because of what we're going through, I'm able to steal time back with my family and with my little kids. And it has been very rewarding in that regard. So there's definitely some blessings if you choose to look for them. Awesome. And I do want to point out you are parked because it's kind of like on TV when you see people driving, but it's just the stuff in the windows that are moving. That's what's happening right now. It looks like you're driving, but you are definitely in fact parked. <laughs> That's right. I'm, I'm following the rules. The last thing I need is uh, to be on the front page of uh, an Edmonton <laughs> newspaper for distracted driving. I'd rather say being on the front page for good news instead of bad news. Now, this is kind of a terrible segue, but speaking of driving and driving in, you are here it's with us today. not a terrible today. segue. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> you are here today with us because this is so exciting. Tonight, Brett Kissel, live at the drive-in, airing on CTV2. This is, we are so excited about this. Uh, I'm sure all your fans and uh, viewers uh, remember back just a, not even a few short months ago when you set out to do this incredible thing have drive-in concerts. Well, now tonight we're going to see step by step everything that went into that. Uh, do you have any uh, sneak peek of what we can expect from that show tonight? You know, I, this has been the most incredible musical adventure that I've ever been on trying to pull off a drive-in concert and not just one, but we did eight in Edmonton and 24 across Canada. It's been extremely unique. It's been great to celebrate this now looking back. However, all of the hoops and the hurdles and everything that we needed to jump through in order to bring everyone back together yet keep everybody safe was a gigantic challenge for me and my family which is why i'm so happy that now this documentary will show the emotional journey that we went on as well as my band and my crew and our entire team uh pulling this off because it was uh something truly extraordinary and it's a uh, a really, really special program. I'm just honored to have been able to produce it and now bring it to the forefront now on CTV tonight. And when you set out to do this, this wasn't like everybody was doing it at the time. Like this was, you were basically at home wondering how you could bring yourself and music closer to fans. There wasn't a template for how to put together a drive-in. <laughs> um, and there definitely wasn't a template how to do eight shows over the course of two days. Uh, I know you are such a visionary when it comes to that, but were you ever at any point wondering, did I just get myself majorly over my head? You know what? I, I've, I've never really had that feeling of, of being in such deep water and, and having that sense of panic or fear. But for me, one of the biggest things that I was thinking about as this is going on is just this thought, is this the right thing? Or right. is this the right time to be doing this? And all we could do was hope for the best. Now, we did all of our homework. We did our due diligence to make sure that this uh, concert and this concept was going to be safe. Mm -hmm. But wondering if this was the right time or if people needed the distraction that music and live music was going to cause, um, 
was, was this the right time? Mm -hmm. And we realized that it was, and it was something that everybody wanted just as badly as I wanted because when we put our first show on sale, it sold out in five minutes. The second one, five minutes after that, we sold out eight shows in under like an hour and a mm -hmm. half. And it just really proved to me, and I think proved to the rest of Canada, that live music needs to do what live music has always done. And that's bring people together. And then you watch what all these other great artists and all of my other great friends in the business mm -hmm. ended up doing with their fan bases. Uh, you look at what Tim Hicks did at, at, at Blues Fest in Ottawa. You look at what the Rec Laws did with all of their incredible drive-in shows. I'm so thankful that they were able to do these shows too. And we were able to come up with this model together. And actually, country music did more shows than any other genre did yeah. around the world. So big, big mad props to everybody in country music saying, hey, we're going to do this for our fans. And I definitely think, you know, you, you can't underestimate the power of blazing that trail to kind of help because I'm sure there are so many people who wanted to do it. Um, but like you said, there was, there was no blueprint. There was a lot of um, things to consider, a lot of things to go through. But once you did it and had so much success with it, I think that really took a lot of pressure off some other people to be like, okay, you know, at least there is a path now. You know what? Absolutely. We're, we are very happy that we're able to, to, I guess, blaze that trail. The reality, though, is that we've all experienced the emotions that come with live music and everything that we're going through this year. We've all experienced these emotions together. And I know that a lot of politicians will say we're in it together. But I would stand up on stage and look out at 300 cars, night after night after night after night, a total of 30,000 people we played to, over 30,000 this summer in a pandemic. <laughs> and I would say the same thing. This is not meant to be awkward. This is meant to be unique. We are here to celebrate and understand that we were making it through. And this documentary shows that and shows the beginning stages of it all, where I'm looking at my wife, Cecilia, and saying, is this the right thing to do? Mm -hmm. I'm looking at my band and my crew and some guys are saying, hell yeah, let's do it. And some guys are saying, what happens if there's a spike of COVID? What happens if you're the right. guy who did it? What happens if this doesn't work out? Mm -hmm. It was a huge risk, but we documented every minute of it in the hours leading up to the show, the days leading up, the weeks leading up, and obviously the eight shows that we did. Um, over the course of that weekend, four shows a day with only like a two hour break. It was, like I said, it was extraordinary, something I've never done and probably will never do again. <laughs> well, even in the best of times, I mean, eight shows over two days, there's definitely not too many people who would be able to pull that off. And I know just the feedback from the shows, I mean, you at show number eight were just as great as show number one. So I'm sure that took a lot of uh, preparing and practicing just to go from such a period of not having any live performances to all of a sudden, you know, jump it up there and do an eight. Well, you know the saying that says absence makes the heart go wander <laughs> or making up for lost time. I felt I had more energy in those eight shows than I would have after, you know, being in typical tour mode and, and maybe playing in, in an arena like we've done so many times before. Yeah. When you, it, it, it's, it's psychology. When you're told you can't have something, or when something is taken away from you, you want it even more. Yes. And for me as an entertainer and somebody who loves to perform and so many people have seen it, obviously, who listen to my music on Pure Country or who've ever seen my show know how much I love to perform. Mm -hmm. And when you tell a guy like me, uh-uh, you can't do it anymore. Well, when you figure out a way to do it and, <laughs> and, and you know, cross the finish line and, and get a chance to do it, 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 it was... It was incredible. I felt I could have done another eight shows if, if they'd have let me. Oh my goodness. So tonight, Brett Kitzel live at the drive-in, 8 p.m. local time, CTV2. Now we're gonna see everything that happens leading up to those shows. But now being on the flip side of that and looking back, um, how does it feel to look over that accomplishment and you know, what are you gonna remember most from that experience? It, it's, it's hard to say because it's really emotional. Um, the amount of work and effort that my team put in, the amount of people that came out to support our shows and raise you know, over $100,000 for the food banks in, 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 in our city that, that needed it and so desperately still need it. 
we accomplished something really great that had a lot more to do with just the singer on stage singing songs. Mm -hmm. It had everything to do with the spirit of community, the community spirit that we all have and how resilient we are as Canadians. That is what I hope people will feel when they watch this show and how I felt watching all of these different versions of the documentary that's now you know, set to air tonight. I really hope that it's an inspiring story that people can uh, rally and, and get behind and, uh, and support because it was very unique. It was uh, a wonderful experience and something so emotional. Now tonight, are you gonna be live tweeting while it's airing? I'm actually going to be on a on a flight uh, to oh. Saskatoon. Uh, my 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 good friend, he's got a he's got a he's got a plane, and he's going to fly me from the farm in Alberta to Saskatoon, so that first thing tomorrow morning, I can be uh, doing vocals on on my new record. So oh I know that my wife has got it PVR'd, and we'll watch it together. But um, sometimes I don't like live tweeting because I just want everyone to watch it and enjoy and not be distracted by what I'm saying or doing. Right. Watch it, enjoy the full hour presentation. And then first thing tomorrow morning, I'm going to get online and see what everybody thought. No rest for the wicked. <laughs> no, it's like, as my grandpa bear says, you can, uh, hard work pays off and you can sleep when you're dead. So I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm going to keep working. Well, we are so excited, Brett, tonight. Again, CTV2, 8 p.m. local time. I am so looking forward to this. And any time that we can see uh, more Canadian country faces on TV, I mean, that's a reason to celebrate in its own. But such an incredible accomplishment. It's going to be a really great uh, documentary to go through and watch. Well, I appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you for letting me talk about it. Thank you for promoting this across all of your channels on Pure Country from coast to coast. And when everybody watches it tonight, I hope you leave inspired and feeling really good about this great Canadian story because we're all in it together and I really appreciate your time. Well, now you can go back to dad duties. Absolutely, my, <laughs> it's my favorite job in the world. <laughs> Thank you, Brett. See you later.